Hello, fellow diamond painting addicts, and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne, and I'm here today to talk about drills. So this all came up, well, I'd been researching this um, for this video previously and trying to figure out the difference between acrylic and resin drills, uh, which one was better, how were they different, how can you even tell? And so I found several videos. There's going to be lots of links in the description below because I found several different videos on that and other things that I want to share with you guys. And then I also will have some links to information that I found in various places. So first and foremost, the biggest video is probably Jadekins, uh, AKA Jade the Tailor. Uh, her YouTube video where she talked about the difference in resin and acrylic drills and which companies use resin versus which companies use acrylic. So according to her video, um, acrylic companies include Mary's Diamonds, Spell Queen, DIY Moon, Art Dot, and Craft Ease. Resin companies include Diamond Art Club, Dreamer Designs, Diamond Painting Deutschland, Cat Eared, Ever Moment, Distracted by Diamonds, and Diamond Dots. And in her video, she goes into a lot of detail about how the differences between resin and acrylic drills. So there's information on how they're shaped, the different things that you can see as far as trash is concerned when you have resin versus acrylic, and then, um, you know, a list of kind of these companies. So the reason that I kind of started down this was because, well, one, I'm, you guys know me, I'm just curious and nosy and I wanted to know. The other reason was, um, if you haven't seen it, I will put a link up there in the description. I did an unboxing for a new diamond painting company called Diamond Painting Shop. And the box said resin drills. And I noticed when I was unboxing that the drills had dimples, which I thought was a sign of acrylic drills. More on that in a minute. So after the video view um, aired, aired, that's such a weird term, after it posted, went live, whatever, um, I was contacted by Rosa, the woman who runs Diamond Painting Shop, and she had had someone else do an unboxing, had noticed the dimples as well, and said, hey, I don't think these are really resin drills. So she went back to her manufacturer and said, are these resin? Because that's what I asked for. And the manufacturer, I guess, basically said, no, we only do acrylic. So she was, is, I don't know when this is going to go out, but in the process of correcting things, letting people know that they're not really resin drills because we all know that makes a difference to some people. And, um, you know, trying to do a, a short-term fix for her box if, so that she can get it redesigned to reflect, you know, what it is. And, or maybe, you know, she'll decide to go with a different manufacturer so she can have actual resin drills. I don't know. But that kind of started me down this whole rabbit hole again. Now, I do want to commend Rosa because I think she was very proactive about, you know, contacting people immediately and letting them know what she had found out that these kits were supposed to be resin. They turned out to be acrylic. She didn't want to mislead anybody. She was offering, you know, refunds to people that had placed orders under the assumption that they were uh, resin, et cetera, et cetera. So I think from a, a customer service standpoint, at least as far as I'm concerned, she did everything she, she could do. Because of course, you know, there are just certain things that are kind of out of your hands. So I kind of wanted to do a little bit of backstory about, you know, everyone always wonders where did diamond painting start? Um, you know, why is everything kind of made in China? So I have found, and, and this was on several different companies, but basically diamond painting started in China. It was patented in China in 2010. And it was by a, a laser uh, technology company out of China. And 
so it started in 2010 in China. I became very popular there. It spread to Russia, became very popular there. And then from there, it just kind of branched out, made its way across the pond. And, you know, now it's kind of everywhere. So that I'm assuming is why almost all diamond paintings are manufactured in China because China does, did, still, maybe holds the patent on diamond painting manufacturing process. Don't know what all that's involved. I don't, I didn't go look up the exact patent, all that kind of stuff. So there's that. And then in the con, in the process of talking to Rosa about, you know, the, the problems that she was having, I went back and kind of looked at, okay, let me look at diamond drills that I've got, you know, kind of laying around either in a kit that I've opened that are in my spares and just kind of see. And when Rosa contacted me, she pointed me towards a post over at Diamond Drills USA, and I will put a link to that down below as well. It says on Diamond Drills that they sell mostly acrylic, and they kind of give an explanation of why. Um, why acrylic is preferred and why they've been going with it, because less trash uh, resin packs can extra, often come with extra resin droplets, broken bits, particles, oily substances, and just, you know, more trash than you want. Uh, resin drills can have air bubbles because of the way that they're manufactured. And I will show you that in a bit. Uh, square resin drills often have small tabs, which is kind of what causes that whole popping problem where you go to place one drill down and it's got that little teeny tiny, almost you can't see it tab sticking off. So when you go to place the next drill, it doesn't sit nicely next to it. And so that other drill keeps trying to pop off. So there's that issue. Um, resin drills, and I tried to look up some information or videos on how diamond painting drills are actually manufactured, like the process of, you know, like one of those how it's made videos, I didn't really find anything. I did find a couple of videos that kind of show drills being bagged, but nothing that really showed how the drills themselves were processed. So I don't really know exactly how they're processed. And, and this is assumptions on my part based on what I've seen people, how I've seen other people doing things with resin. Uh, resin, you need a mold and you fill it. So hence the air bubbles, if you don't like shake it, it will have an air bubble in it, um, which causes an imperfection. So for instance, here I have a tray of resin imperfections. Let me find one. So you can see, I hope right here, if it focuses, that Maybe I need to zoom in rather than. So you can see this particular drill has uh, had an air bubble in it. And so the drill did not form completely. So that can happen with um, acrylic or with resin drills. The other thing, because they're made in a mold, is that they get improperly filled. And what that means is basically they are concave on the back. And if I can pick this up so that I can show it to you. So in addition to having an air bubble, they can get not completely filled. Let me zoom in here. And hopefully you can see that this one is kind of concave. It's not going to sit flat on the canvas because it dips in the middle. And, you know, with that dip in the middle, it's not going to sit flat on the canvas. So that's an issue with resin drills. Um, another issue with resin drills is that they can be oily and or clumpy. And because of the way resin drills are made, resin has to cure. It's like an epoxy where you mix two chemicals together and they interact and then you have to let them sit and get hard. If you don't give them enough curing time, they don't get all the way hard. And so they can get clumpy and stick together because they're still slightly tacky because they're not completely cured. And apparently sometimes can give off like a, an oily substance. So 
Uh, and also, if they're not cured all the way, they can give off a really pretty nasty chemical smell if they're bagged before they're fully cured. And so, um, you know, you don't, you don't have to use a drill or you could have to use a drill grinder with resin ones because they could, they have gotten stuck together. If they're really oily and or smelly, you might actually have to wash them with soap and water is what someone suggested to do that to, to make them usable. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend time washing my diamond painting drills. That sounds incredibly, I was going to say obnoxious, but annoying. Uh, and just not how I want to spend my diamond painting time. So that was a good explanation from them of why they use acrylic rather than resin. And also resin is more expensive to manufacture, which is a, a big deal for a lot of companies because of course, when you're talking about the bottom line, the cheaper you can manufacture things, the more money you can put into profits. And so, you know, you can manufacture the acrylic drills faster, better, cheaper, for the most part, from what I've read, uh, than you can the resin drills, which is why the, the companies who say they're using resin charge more because it costs more to make them. It takes longer. They have more trash, which means lots more drills get thrown away before they even get bagged up. And they have to provide you with more because even though lots may be getting thrown away at the manufacturing process before they're bagged, there still may be trash in there that you know you're going to have to throw away and they want to make sure that you have enough drills to finish your project so all of that combines to kind of make it more expensive so so that's kind of you know the why people use resin or use acrylic versus resin so and i found a couple of videos um, that kind of showed um manufacturing in china but they kind of show the process from, you know, how they make the canvases with the pictures and then how they print the canvases, how they cut the canvases, uh, you know, putting on the glue or the adhesive and then people basically picking drills um, or, or bagging. As I said, I couldn't really find anything that showed the actual manufacturing process of drills. So I'm not real clear on how it works. And I, I think the process of, you know, maybe filling a mold may be the same for both. Because one of the things they say is that for acrylic drills, there's a couple of telltale signs. And again, some of these are in Jadakin's video. She does have a disclaimer that hers are about square drills. She doesn't do enough round drills to, you know, know the differences. But I'm assuming a lot of them are probably the same. So one of the things that she mentions is that um, acrylic drills have what she calls geodes. And geodes are like these weird kind of, you know, rock shaped pieces of plastic that are basically pieces of trash that somehow, you know, get stuck in your bag when they're not really drills. But this is, you know, essentially a block of plastic that your acrylic drills are being made from, okay? And then she says one of the telltale signs of um, acrylics is that you can have excess around the edges that is flat. So for instance, this particular drill, you can see it's got little kind of smushed out sides and it's flat. So I assume that means that this is an acrylic drill, right? Except that I'm pretty sure this came out of a, a company's product that said their drills were resin. So right now that's in my, I don't really know what to do with this tray. And um, I have another one here that is a round drill with kind of the same issue that it has kind of this flat, you know, little tab pieces on it that didn't get, I don't know, shaved off, cut off, whatever during the manufacturing process. But I'm pretty sure, again, this is from a company that said they had resin drills. So I don't really know what to do with that. So, yeah. Um, and also, according to Jade, when you have kind of these like little round pieces, like this little bitty round piece here, that is a sign that is acrylic. I don't that one I'm not sure of either. I mean, that's what she says. I don't know. So, um, yeah, 
So I went through and I don't think on Jade's video, she mentions the dimples on the bottom of drills. And I didn't find anywhere else where anybody mentioned the dimples on the bottom of drills. And when I say dimples, let me find one and I'll show you what I mean. And I will try to insert pictures in when I'm editing this video, if it turns out that these are not clear. Um, if I can get this picked up. Okay. So hopefully you can see that there. Let me hold it down a little bit and zoom in and see if that makes it a little bit clearer. You can see, hopefully, there it's got a bit of a dimple on it, right? So I, I understood, and I, I couldn't find where I got this from, but I understood that having a dimple like that was a sign of the fact that it was acrylic. So again, I get kind of confused. So like Jade said that excess around the edges was flat, meant that it was acrylic. But this is an AB drill from a company that says they use resin drills. So I didn't kind of know what to do with that. And again, Jade says in her video that her information applies to um, square and not necessarily round. And I don't know what the difference in manufacturing is the process for squares versus round. I'm just trying to figure out as a consumer, is there a way for me to know for sure that it is resin versus acrylic? Because so far it kind of seems to me that uh, there isn't really a way to tell. So like these are some leftover drills, some leftover AB drills. This company says that they use resin drills, but they have these dimples in them. So that makes me wonder. Now, I do have some drills from some companies and I'm not out to, you know, kind of out any company and, you know, make them say, you know, claim that they're lying or whatever. I don't know what the process is. I'm just trying to figure out as a consumer how I can be sure that if I'm paying for resin drills because they're more expensive, that that's actually what I'm getting. So these particular drills say that they are resin and they don't have any dimples on the bottom. Um, these are AB drills, but there's no dimples. They look great. So, you know, I assumed that those were good AB drills. Um, and, and not that these AB drills are bad. It's just that they say they're resin but then they have these dimples, which again, I thought was a sign of acrylic, so I don't know. Um, these drills, which are square, do not have any dimples on the back and look pretty good. You know, I, I don't see a lot of trash. I'm not seeing any dimples. They do kind of have the tabs on the sides, you know, like I would expect to find with, um, resin drills. So that there's that. Now this one is from kind of a budget company and the drills look pretty good, but there are some drills with dimples in them. So, you know, I'm going to assume these are, especially since they're from a budget company, these are acrylic drills. And then I have some from a diamond painting company that says they are resin drills. And in looking at these, you know, they, they're really good quality. There is hardly any trash. I don't see any holes. Um, so I'm inclined to believe them. No dimples on the back, but we'll see there's a dimple right there. But also I haven't seen any of the other trash that I would normally associate with resin drills which is, you know, some of the things Jade said to look for. No cupped ones, no ones that have bubbles in them, none that are stuck together. And I don't know if that's because these are round versus square. I don't know. So I have put a call out <laughs> to the diamond painting community at large on my Instagram to kind of say, okay, is there a kind of foolproof method to determine whether or not drills are acrylic or resin? So one of the last things that I found 
was a website that talks about, again, the difference between acrylic and resin and mentions again that resin is more expensive. Resin drills tend not to cause popping drills. And it does mention that a lot of stores will claim that they have resin drills when they know or are betting that customers won't be able to tell the difference or worse, they don't know themselves. And I have run into that because I have actually emailed a company that said, well, it was a company that said they used acrylic resin drills. And so I went, what? How can they be both acrylic and resin? I thought it was an either or. And the response from this company was, we really don't know. That's what our manufacturer told us. Well, that's not a great answer for me because if you don't know, then how can I trust what you're telling me, right? So um, this other company where, where I found out, found more information about resin drill says that it's hard to tell for sure whether or not a company is using resin or acrylic. But it said one of the good ways to check is to see whether or not a company is selling the same kit in more than one size. Because that is usually going to be an indication that if they are producing a kit, the same image in more than one size, they're doing it as cheaply as possible, which means they are probably using acrylic drills. Um, because resin drills are expensive and can only be produced in bulk. So if they're selling the same painting in multiple sizes, odds are they're doing it in acrylic drills because it would be too cost prohibitive for them to do that for all the different sizes and have resin drills ready to go for all of those. It's much cheaper for them to just print them kind of on demand in all the different sizes and use the cheaper acrylic drills uh, and it will have less impact on their bottom line. And this particular article says, you know, it's not that acrylic drills are bad. Um, that as the diamond painting manufacturing has progressed, because again, they've been doing this since 2010 when the patent was filed, so 12 years now, that they have improved the technology so that they can improve the acrylic drills to more closely match the more expensive resin ones so that they can be the same almost the same quality but much less expensive to manufacture much like they compared it to you know getting a synthetic diamond versus an actual mined diamond and that synthetic diamonds are getting to be so close it's often hard to tell the difference even experts can be fooled so and you know again I, I am I am going to term myself an equal opportunity diamond painter. I do not have a preference for squares or rounds. If I like the image, I will buy it in either. I don't have a preference for squares or rounds, uh, or um, not squares or rounds. I don't have a preference for acrylic or resin, other than I want them to be good quality. I would rather have great acrylic drills than crappy resin ones. Uh, I think that's true for most people, but if I'm going to be paying a premium price for resin drills, I want to know that I'm getting actual resin drills um, because, I mean, that seems kind of dishonest if a company is telling you that they have resin drills and they don't um, because, you know, again, we all know that they're more expensive to manufacture and so people who want those resin drills are willing to pay a little bit extra for that premium um, resin drill because that's what they want. And I think would be upset to find out that they're paying for drills that they think are resin that turn out not to be. So that's kind of my spiel. I have kind of an, an SOS out to the diamond painting community on my Instagram to ask them, you know, is there a foolproof way to tell whether or not I'm getting resin or diamond drills. I thought the dimples were kind of a good, reliable indicator, but it's maybe turning out that that's not true. So I'm going to wait until I get some additional information, I hope, 
from the diamond painting community to see, you know, kind of what's out there. And if anyone can tell me the actual difference and if there is a way for us to tell or whether as consumers, you just have to really trust that the company you're buying from is telling you the truth about what kind of drills they're using. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that here. I will come back and kind of update you when I get some information back from, I hope, people on Instagram. I may also reach out on Facebook to kind of ask people their thoughts and see if anybody really knows. Uh, but that's where it sits right now. So yeah, I'm curious. I, I definitely will be paying much more attention myself. Again, I got to say as an equal opportunity diamond painter, I while I knew there was a difference between resin and acrylic, I really didn't pay that much difference. As long as the drills were good quality for me, then I wasn't too concerned about it. I did go back and look and see um, on several companies' websites who said they were using resin. So again, on Jade's video, she said resin includes um, Diamond Art Club, Dreamer Designs, Diamond Painting Deutschland, Cat Eared, Ever Moment, Distracted by Diamonds, and Diamond Dots. I will also say that I went through and looked at um, Treasure Studios Art says that they have resin. Craftably says resin. Uh, Oraloa, interestingly enough, says their drills are resin or acrylic, so I don't know how you're supposed to know. Um, and then... I think that's it for resin. Oh, paint with diamonds said resin. I think that's it for the ones in addition to Jade. And then I went back and looked at, she says, Mary's Diamond, Spell Queen, DIY Moon, Art Dot, and Crafties are all um, acrylic. And again, hers was all in uh, applicable to squares. I went back to other websites. And let's see, who did I find was saying, like I said, or Lois said resin or acrylics. So I don't really know. Um, she has crafties on her acrylic list. I couldn't find anywhere on crafties where it said what it was. Um, I couldn't find anything on DIY moon that said what their drills were made of. Um, Mary's diamonds does say premium acrylic. So uniquely yours down under says they use acrylic. Uh, turns out Rosa from Diamond Painting Shop discovered that hers are acrylic. Diamond Drills USA uses acrylic. And then I did look up that Jacaru, which is a kind of a craft store in Canada. It did not say which one they used. Um, so yeah, so I mean, you know, I, I again, I'm just trying to, as a consumer, figure out what am I paying for? And am I getting what I'm paying for? So, uh, so yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that guys until I have some more information back, hopefully from the community at large and we'll see where I end up. So catch you guys in a minute. Okay guys, I am back and I have some additional information from you. And I just want to say, I was trying, hoping to come back and give you guys kind of a definitive, ta-da, this is how you tell. Haven't found that. If you have, please enlighten the rest of us. Um, so I did a bit more sleuthing and I kind of went outside the diamond painting world to see if I could find the differences between plastic and resin. And I found one website that said that, um, one of the common misconceptions is that resin is a form of plastic. And they said, actually, plastic is a form of resin. So they say that resin is a chemical compound obtained from plants, like the resin tree sap, basically, right? Um, it is usually clear, sort of yellowish, and pretty thick. The original form is what they term volatile, which just means it kind of stays a liquid, but it will harden into a, a solid material if you add chemicals to it. Um, plastic, on the other hand, is a chemical compound, and it's generally considered a synthetic resin. 
So plastics are made from petrochemicals and there are different kinds of plastics like acrylics, polyester, silicone, polyurethanes, et cetera, et cetera. So then what's the difference from making things out of resin or plastic? And um, it says, you know, typically resin is what they, it's molded. It's not um, kind of injection processed is, is the way that they, so, so that's the only thing I've found so far that is really kind of a true telltale sign of something being resin is those kind of hollowed out concave drills that you get as trash sometimes so that you know that it's resin. Although when I started thinking about it, I've really only seen those kind of concave hollowed out shells where the mold didn't get filled completely in square drills. I've never really seen that in round drills. So I don't know if there's a difference. So one of the things they said is that, um, so it says, again, resins are molded, plastics are made through an injection molding process, which in my mind kind of means they're like squirted out through a tube and somehow molded. Um, so resin looks brighter and cleaner on the surface, but they are thicker and heavier than using the acrylic plastic. And because they have to be molded, it's a little bit harder than using the plastic ones, which are easier to shape into the form that you want. So that's why it may be easier slash cheaper to use plastic. Okay, so that's one other place that I found. Then I found a place that says um, plastic, because I was looking for the definitions of plastic versus resin. Plastic is a general term for compounds usually made from hydrocarbons that tend to be soft and easily manipulated. Um, there are two types, thermoplastics, which soften and melt at higher temperatures, allowing them to be molded like acrylic drills and thermosets that cure such as epoxy, which is typically resin because resin is mixed with something else to make it harden and set. So a resin is a liquid that can be transformed into a plastic, right? See, that contradicts the, the previous one that said that resin is a form of plastic. Resin can be transformed into plastic, which I guess, hmm, who knows? So then I found yet another site that says that resin is the most generic term referring to a material that is soft and malleable. Most plastics can be called resin. Plastic is most often referred to as is most often used to refer to synthetic resins. So now there's synthetic resin because I know I've seen some drills that say they're acrylic resin. So I, I don't know what that means either. And then I found yet another site. Now this particular site was a site that was comparing rhinestones and they were talking about real rhinestones made of glass, like the Swarovski crystals, crystals that you see my mom used to collect those. So I have a bunch of like Shrovsky crystals setting around anyway. So they were talking about rhinestones, resin versus acrylic and plastic rhinestones are made of acrylic or resin. They are both plastic, but what's the difference? And they said the production method acrylic is formed by injection molding where resins are with a silicone mold and dropped in, which is why you see those hollowed out concave drills in your trash when you're looking at real resin, right? Um, but then this one says the resin rhinestone might be right brighter than acrylic, but resin will yellow over time and its brightness will decrease. But then it also says that resin is better for production purposes. So I don't know what to think. You know what I mean? I mean, this one says acrylic is better because it won't yellow um, with resin, the molds can deform o over time because of the way that the drills are processed or the rhinestones are processed. And so that's what drives up the production costs. So, and it's hard to hold on to stock, to stock up. So that's why most rhinestones are acrylic because that's easier and more cost effective for um, wholesalers. 
Now, having said all of that, I have some trash from a, a kit that says it is rhinestone drills. I don't know at this point if it is or it isn't rhinestone drills. I mean, resin drills. So it has these little kind of droplets, which I always associated with resin, right? But then it has these weird kind of pieces left over, which I always associated with plastic. I also have drills that have kind of this squished out edge which I also associated with plastic and I have several of those. So, and then for me, I always thought the biggest sign of, well, one of the biggest signs of acrylic was these little geodes, right? Because this is some piece of plastic that got knocked off during the manufacturing process, but these are supposed to be resin drills. So that doesn't seem like a good indicator either. Now I will say this, these drills also have dimples on the bottom. I don't know if you can see, but this kind of clear one right there has a dimple in the bottom, which I thought was a sign of acrylic drills, which is kind of what started this whole thing in the first place because the diamond painting shop said they had resin drills. They had dimples in the bottom. They checked the manufacturer said, oh no, you're, they are acrylic. And so I'm not even sure if some of the diamond painting companies themselves understand whether or not they're resin or acrylic. I looked everywhere to try and find a video of how diamond drills are manufactured. And like I said before, I found some that kind of show them being packaged. I could find nothing that showed them being manufactured. So I don't know if that has to do with the patent, if it's some kind of state secret on how the drills are manufactured, but I couldn't find anything. And even looking for videos of diamond painting factories, it seemed like almost every second video I came across, it was the same video that had been cut into different pieces and used again and again. So I don't know about that. Now, looking at these drills again, I have some like this kind of tan one that have the dimple in the bottom, but then I got to looking at this one and this one almost looks concave on the bottom. I mean, I it, it's in here because I thought it was a dimple, but after looking at it kind of in the light and kind of moving it around, it seems more like it's a little bit concave on the bottom. Now, I haven't found any of these that have holes in them. Although this one right here that is moving around, let me see if I can get it. I don't even know if that, that's the right one now. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but if I can get it to flip over, I don't know if the camera will focus that close, but it looks like, um, it's got maybe a hole on it, or at least it looks weird when I'm looking at it with kind of some oblique light from the side, like it's got some indentations in it. Now I haven't gotten out my little jeweler's loop. This one does too, to look at them and see if they're actually holes or if it's just the facets and it just looks weird in the light. That was the other thing about resin versus plastic was that initially resin could um, be cut into more facets. And so you could make it shinier because you could give it more facets. As manufacturing has caught up with all of this, I think they can now do almost as much with the plastic as they could do with the resin and the plastic is more cost effective. The other thing for me is I really want to know because resin, because it is uh, essentially a plant-based, uh, I don't know, compound, whatever. It's supposed to be eco-friendly. And I've seen some companies advertise eco-friendly resin drills, which I'm assuming means that they could possibly then be recycled or at the very least they are biodegradable and at some point will break down before the millennia that's needed for um, plastic drills which I would be willing to pay for the, you know, number of facets and all of that stuff is not as big of a deal to me personally, 
but if I knew that I was buying drills that were resin and those could somehow be recycled versus all the ones that I know are acrylic that can't be, then I would be happy to pay that kind of added on premium for those drills, knowing that yes, they're a little bit more expensive, but I'm going to be kinder to the environment. So like I said, I've kind of asked around other than the hollowed out drills, I haven't really found a definitive answer. So if you know of a surefire way to tell whether or not drills are plastic or resin that doesn't involve fire or other chemicals or like what I'm looking for is a kind of visual foolproof way to tell whether your drills are resin or plastic. I mean, again, I don't think there's any any way to ensure that the kit that you're getting is resin or acrylic until you get it in your hands and you can open up the drills and see it. Because like I said, you know, apparently some of these companies are telling people that they're resin when they're actually acrylic and not admitting that they're acrylic until they get questioned. Also, some of them say acrylic resin, so I don't know if that's a thing. Some companies say acrylic or resin drills. So again, I don't even know if the companies know for sure which drills they're getting. So some of you out there who have access to actual scientists who could maybe explain this, is resin a plastic? Is it biodegradable? Is it worth paying extra? Burning questions that I have. And then again, just, you know, kind of, I think everyone would like to know if I get a kit, how do I know whether it's resin or acrylic? Because again, you know, I'm sure all of us want to use our money responsibly and I don't want to pay top dollar for a kit that I think is resin. And then it turns out to be acrylic. Now, if the company didn't know, which seems true, then, you know, that would be a nice thing to know so that you could maybe pass on to that company, hey, I don't think your drills are really resin. And then it's up to them what they want to do with it. Hopefully they will all be, you know, like diamond painting shop and try to work towards fixing whatever the issue is. You know, she's trying very hard not to mislead anyone. I don't know, you know, how that situation is going to resolve. I personally, if it was me, would be super upset that I was paying for what I thought was resin and didn't get it. And, you know, once contracts have been signed, what's your recourse? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Um, but yeah, if it was me, I would be super upset. And, you know, I mean, that's the kind of thing that hurts your reputation as a company. So again, kudos to her for trying to get out on front of it. But yeah, then, then where do you go from there as a company? Or, you know, some of these other companies who've been saying all along that they set, have resin drills and, and know full well that they're not, but just think that, you know, they'll get you to pay a premium price for it. So I don't know, guys, I'm just asking for help. I looked on Instagram. I've looked on Facebook. I've done all my Google searching that I can do. And those are the answers that I came up with. So if you have any different ones, please share. I would love to be educated about this topic. In the meantime, you might have wondered why these two cases are sitting here, and that's because uh, my whip and chat will go up on Sunday, the 30th, and in that I am going to be doing a small giveaway as a thank you to my subscribers. So I'm sorry to say that at this point it's going to be a US only giveaway. So for my international subscribers, I'm so, so sorry. But with the whole shipping supply issues on top of all the COVID issues, there's countries that are no longer allowing things to be sent in right now. So for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a U.S. only giveaway. I will be giving all the deets on the whip and chat on Sunday, and it will run just like all my other giveaways. And you can, you know, when that video posts on Sunday, you can get all the details and see what you need to do. And then on um, Tuesday, which will be February 1st, I will do the drawing and I will have two lucky winners. Somebody will win the craft mates and somebody will win the 30 bottle case. 
So um, be looking for that video. And I will again leave all the details there so that you can check it out and do what you need to do if you're interested in uh, winning either one of these things. Now, honestly, I, I wish there was something I could do right now for international people. I'm going to do this one. And then I do have other storage that I'm going to be giving away that I will be doing for international people only. Um, because U.S. guys, you're kind of getting your shot at these two. So, but I don't know when that will be because everything is still crazy almost two years later. So, um, yeah, there's that. So be on the lookout for that. Guys, I will put links as many as I can. I, I may run out of room in my description. Who knows? I went so many different places. But I will put links in the description below so that you can check out all of this if you're interested. If you're not, feel free to ignore. But, you know, for me, just kind of a burning question. How do I know for sure that I have resin drills versus acrylic ones? So thanks so much for listening to me ramble. Uh, my voice is starting to go, so I'm going to go. And yeah, if you have any helpful hints, thoughts, tips, let me know. Leave a comment below. Help a girl out here. Okay, guys, that's it for me. Hopefully I will see you on Sunday at the Whip and Chat. So until then, on your way out, if you like this video, don't forget to do all the things. Give me a thumbs up. That helps me get my video shown to other people. Hit that subscribe button. That also helps me get shown to other like-minded diamond painting people. And hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.